Hi everyone. I wanted to share with you some things we're doing here at Northwind and creating uh, plant patterns. As I, traditionally people come in and uh, they buy perennials basically based on emotion. So I like the blue, that's a bright yellow, that, that I enjoy that yellow. And really don't have a really understanding of how they're going to associate those plants with each other in the garden or actually how the plants will grow into each other in a compatible way. So we thought we'd create something that can get people off to a good start. And we've done this for a number of years now, and actually in our own way haven't pursued it as strongly as we should. But we have these plant patterns that I've created. We have a, on this certain area, it's a four by four area. And in the area, I have Echinacea purpurea, and that's a Prairie Splendor, and Coreopsis for just a lot of golden showers. And basically, I've related them to each other within the four by four areas so they would grow into each other in a comfortable way and grow into each other in a healthy way. And then also we let uh, folks know about how to care for this pattern, how the pattern could be incorporated into other patterns or into an established garden, and, and also some information we have on other patterns about pollinators and also cut flowers and plants that grow in uh, moist or dry soil. So we have a number of offerings and different patterns for different types of positions in the garden. And we think this should be helpful because then instead of just buying one or two plants and hoping it all works out, with the patterns you get off to a good start, you create good relationships, and you can enhance areas in the garden that might not be doing well by putting in a pattern or a group of patterns that mingle together in a healthy way. And then in, in, for you, you can introduce yourself to these patterns and you can learn along with the plants and develop your relationship with the plants, the patterns, and further yourself uh, in the garden and have more fun and, and, and enjoy it. So stop out at Northwind and we'll help you pick out some plant communities and develop some plant relationships along with the plants that you have an emotional connection for also. All right, I'll see you later. Bye again. So let's take a look at Coreopsis verticillata. Uh, the name it was given is Golden Showers. That's uh, kind of a market name. Uh, it's native to the east coast of the United States. It has a soft textured foliage. You can see very soft textured foliage. It starts blooming in late June, mid to late June, depending on our temperatures of spring. And it has a mounding growth habit. It's, it's fairly upright, but it's upright and mounding. So it's not vertically as upright. It has a mounded, rounded habit. And it reaches its mature height of about 30 to 36 inches by late June. And that's about as tall as it's going to get. And it's gonna have a width of about, uh, eventually one plant will cover about 24 inches in width. It spreads by short rhizomes. And actually, I, let me show you, maybe I can. I don't know if you'll see this, but the rhizomes are very attractive. They're a bright yellow. So when you dig the plant and divide it or move it around the garden, you're, you're, you pause for a moment because these rhizomes are very attractive when you, when, you, when you dig them out of the ground in the fall. And it does so nicely with, uh, this is Echinacea purpurea, a uh, selection called Prairie Splendor. Prairie Splendor has a much more vertical growth habit than mounding. So when you place the two together, as you can see on the card, I've used three to four Echinacea purpureas to two Coreopsis verticillata golden showers, simply because these will grow upright and vertical more than mounding. And this will have that 24 inch mounding look. So the growth rate and growth habit will stretch a little more than the Echinacea. So based on the way it's going to move out and put a little more pressure on the echinaceas, I have to use more echinaceas so the pressure from the coreopsis doesn't overtake the one or two echinaceas you would put them with. So the balance is about three to one or four to one. And then you can mingle them together based on the scale and the space you have to create the pattern. So it's very exciting. Once you know the growth rate and growth habit of the plant and understand it from youth to maturity, you start to become unstoppable. That still doesn't mean you don't screw up, but your screw-ups become something that you can be more relaxed about in the garden. And you can enjoy gardening, and it becomes so much fun. So we'll see you later. Thanks.